Are we on? Yes, but I gotta hide this. Uh oh, we're and here we go. Here. Hi everyone. Hi guys. Who are you? Seth Rudetsky. I'm James Wesley. Welcome to Stars in the House. Wait, my hair looks crazy. Um, hi guys. Yeah, wow. We're scheduling the hell out of this. Can I just give the big news about the star that contacted us? Sure. So a week from Saturday, we got an email from um I still I still believe from Leia Salanga. Asking, I literally forgot, you know, this is, we're just inviting people like via my text and email, like, and James is looking at lists from Concert for America. So I just forgot about Leah Salanga. She asked to be on it. I was like, yeah, we want you. She's, in, she's Manila. in Manila. She's in Manila. So she said, can I do Saturday? And I said, sure. What's the time difference? Well, the time difference is literally how many hours, James? 12 hours. She's going to do our 2 p.m. broadcast. She's going to stay up until 2 a.m., and do and our broadcast. Sing her face off. Literally, oh yeah, she's fully singing. So I, is that amazing? Well, her two neighbors won't mind. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> um, we're here for the Actors Fund, and this is our new web series to bring hope, to bring light, to bring education from Dr. Lapook, and uh, and and bring our our talented friends on board to to bring uh, some music with yes, us. Yes, live in the day and connect with people. So, so hold on, because we got some, people have been writing uh, emails to stars in the house 2020 at Gmail. So stars in the house 2020, but I first want to read that. some donations from that were left over from uh, last night's show. And that's Nancy from California 51. Thank you, Ruth from New York 103. Gretchen 515 from New York. I think I know who you are, Gretchen. Thank you. Our good friend Gretchen. Julia 25 from Wisconsin. Linda. 51 from Massachusetts, Judy, $25 from New Jersey, Stephen from Washington, D.C., 25, Zachary, 18, Rhode Island, Shannon, 25, New York, Ursula, 25, California, and Teresa, $103. So that's, that's it. Thank now, you. Now, some of these letters, I wanted to read a couple. I'm going to have my glasses on because I cannot see this. Oh. Yes. You're there right. I am. Um, shush. So this is a little bit. This is literally from a Broadway fan in China. Dear Seth and James, I'm Teresa, and I'm a Broadway fan in China. I try to go to New York to see shows whenever I have enough time and money. That's a, that's a lot of money to New York City <laughs> I show. appreciate your effort in making this concert series so much. It helps bring Broadway to our bedrooms around the world. Here in China, we are phasing out on this coronavirus. It's not completely gone, but we are getting much better. Uh, and she asked, and, and she goes on. It was really, really. Let me be specific. We're phasing yeah. out on this Corona crisis. Yes, thank you. Thank Meaning you. that they followed the protocol. If we all follow the protocol that Dr. John LaPook is going to repeat again today, social distancing, hand washing, right. this will end. Dr. LaPook keeps saying that it will end this kind of mass craziness that's happening right now. So you've got to follow that protocol. And I'm talking to you, millennials. I'm a millennial. I totally identify with okay, you. Okay, now I want to be out this, partying. This is a show, Seth. I'm going to take off the glasses. This is a show about facts. Oh. This is about truth, not fiction. Okay, now, but <laughs> I'm a millennial. Okay. Another another letter. I just wanted real fast. This is literally Aloha, Seth and James. Every time at this time of year, I make a pilgrimage from Hawaii to New York City to see Broadway Backwards, which has been canceled. Yeah, the major fundraisers for Broadway Cares and Actress Fund are basically being canceled. So not only are they overwhelmed with the need for money, their regular income stream is not even happening. So, and they normally come, they were literally on their way from Hawaii. And then when they got to California, they realized that they had to turn back home. And so they literally, this they're making this, uh, or Rich Ellis, thank you, Rich, is making this his Broadway breakfast because of course it's a little bit earlier than two o'clock in Hawaii. Oh, wow. <laughs> and afternoon, our evening shows are his afternoon uh, matinee. So thank you, Rich. So one of the things I wanted to talk about before we bring on uh, Dr. Dr. John LaPook is um, the ki kindness because we, instead of going to our grocery store, we, we're, we have a house upstate and there's a little grocery store that's down the street and we're vegetarians and they don't necessarily carry everything we we eat. And we ask them, we really want to support you as a small business. And we would prefer to, because we know we could tell that she was really taking care of social distancing and the whole thing. She was wearing gloves she for would each different customer. Every customer she would change her gloves. She, and we just wanted to support her. And she said, we'll order You tell us what you want and we'll, and we'll order it for you. And she literally before last night's show, she called me and said, if you want to come at seven o'clock, we close at seven. I'll stay open for you. Because she knew that we had our show at eight. We we're going to be busy all day. So she let us come at the very end. And and got her stuff and came here. So that's a shout out to Tammy. Thank you, Tammy. 
for that. And speaking of kindness, our friend Blake Ross, our friend Blake Ross, us. who we love. I work with her at Playbook for a million years. We've been pals forever. She started this fabulous site. I'm gonna, actually, I'm gonna put it in her banner. Why don't you talk about it for a second? Yeah, it's banner. called, she just created this and it's called, it's called Kindness of Strangers. I gotta put my glasses on again. And it's basically, you can go to a kindstranger.com, a kindstranger.com. It's totally free. And it's basically a way you can sign up for a 30 minute session. And the premise is really simple. I'm just gonna read it. Donate 30 minutes of your time virtually to someone who needs it. So it's a way of reaching out. So that's gonna, I think gonna put it up. There you go. Go to a kindstranger.com. You can either ask for help whatever help you need, or you can just donate. And one of them, one of the things you can, you can give is a friendly face. This is very isolating. So you could just literally FaceTime with somebody and they can contact you by email. I put down a friendly face and four dogs to say hello. Cause some people just love seeing dogs playing around. But tell, tell them what they're doing. And then we're going to move on to Dr. Lapu number three here that she was saying. Oh, this is very important. Um, right now, NYU Langone, which is the big medical center in New York, um, is really working overtime because there are a lot of cases happening in New York. So she wrote, we're working to get some messages of encouragement to the staff of NYU Langone who are working on the front lines of this pandemic. Send them a quick message of support here. You go to a kind stranger right there, dot com so and then it's just slash NYU. So a kind stranger dot com slash NYU. It's a great website and we love Blake. So speaking, speaking of hospitals, doctors, let's bring on Dr. John LaPook, shall we? Again, hi, Dr. LaPook. Hi, guys entertainment show, and yet we have our own chief medical correspondent. He's chief medical correspondent of CBS and stars in the house. <laughs> I, right. and I like to say that you're the spoonful of sugar that helps the medicine go down. And we have to, I just got off the phone with Tony Fauci, you know, who's the head of infectious diseases for the NIH, Anthony Fauci, yes, sir. A national hero. And I talked to him about a piece I'm gonna do on Sunday for CBS Sunday morning. Um, I'm gonna give a straight to camera right at the beginning of, of the broadcast of the show. Uh, giving sort of the latest. And I went over messaging with him and we talked, you mentioned it, good for you, about social distancing, about flattening the curve. He said, you cannot say that enough. So I'd like every single time to start off saying it. We have this opportunity, like right now, I'm talking in the next two to four weeks to, and the president is has a thing at about 15 days of actually making a difference. And why is that? Because with an epidemic, you get a big peak at the beginning, that peak can see an overload of the healthcare system, not yeah. enough healthcare professionals, not enough beds, not enough medical supplies. But if we can blunt it, if we can flatten the curve, we can make a difference. We know it makes a difference from China and South Korea. And right. so the measures we're talking about is hand washing. I know it seems like something your mother told you, very serious, life-saving, 20 seconds, every part, the tips of the fingers, especially the backs and the front, with soap and water. And the thumbs. I forgot about the thumbs till I saw the CDC video. I forgot. You gotta do the thumbs too. Yeah, prehensile. And if you're using that, um, here's a little thing. If I actually was doing this wrong until about 10 years ago when I took a hospital course. Um, Purell or those those alcohol things, we miss the tips of our fingers. So put some in the kind of the ball, like the palm of your hands. Tip put your fingers in first. Oh. Your fingers, and then make sure then you get everything, every single oh. thing. don't miss the fingertips, okay? when you cough or sneeze into a tissue or into the crook of your arm, and then social distancing, basically staying away from each other as much as possible. We know it works. And thank you for the shout out to the millennials. Yesterday, Dr. Deborah Burks, B-I-R-X, who's on that, uh, the Corona Task Force that the president has, she specifically said, look, we know that the elderly and the people with underlying medical conditions like high blood pressure and heart disease and diabetes and the compromised immune system, weakened immune system, they're at most risk. But guess what? People in their 20s, 30s, and 40s can also get very sick. And if they're not sick, they can still get a little bit sick or have no symptoms and spread it to mom, grandmom, granddad. And, you know, I, I think about my dad, who was a member of the greatest generation. He died a couple of years ago, a few months short, shy of 100. He was in the Battle of the Bulge. I mean, think about what our parents, I mean, the, the my mother and my father did to try to sacrifice. And all we're asking millennials to do is don't go out and party on the beach stay home, stay on the on the couch and do nothing. That's not asking too much to do nothing. Anyway, and I love the kindness message. We're distancing ourselves from each other. Everybody needs to be together. It's good for your health. It helps you sleep better. And when you sleep better, your immune system can repair. So I love what you're doing. And that's getting that message out to millennials, which is not a typical audience for the CBS Evening News or CBS News necessarily. I love being able to do this, which is why I'm giving an hour each day when I can, two to three, and eight tonight, I have to tell you something you don't know, which is tomorrow at two o'clock, 
for an hour. Um, there's going to be a, a, an hour broadcast for Sirius Ra Doctors Radio at NYU. So I'm going to have to be on that. I'm going to be with the um, the CEO, with Dr. Grossman, who was mm. the dean there, and with the various heads of people who are involved with this. So I don't think our contract with you allows you <laughs> for competition. Uh, yeah. So I just, I thought this was a this was a good kind of intimate way to let you know when. Oh, oh kind of we could be on our good behavior, John. Now, we'll, I see. We'll talk okay. to HR. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna bring <laughs> we'll you back later. Bit, okay. If you have any questions for Dr. Lapook, please post them in comments, and we'll ask him when he comes right. back. Thanks, guys. You guys are Talk to you soon. By the way, I love all the comments happening on the side. My good pal, ever since high school, my pal Whitney Mallon is watching. Hi, Whitney. We've known each other since English A in ninth grade, which I did not deserve to be in. And we have a great question here. We've been saying this. You've got a social distance. We I actually saw sort of a kind of fun fundraiser yesterday with a singer and a pianist that don't live together standing right next to each other. And I was right. just like, you guys, stay in your damn house. I love that you want to fundraise. Unless you already live together. Right, like we do. Right. So uh, Elisa just asked, what does that say? Seth, what, what video streaming service are you using? And we're using StreamYard. StreamYard.com. So Orlando Shakes, use StreamYard.com. I We're so bad technically, and we're able to use it. I mean, right. we're really not good. That's right. And I just helped Andrea Martin set it up. And Andrea Martin, let me just put it this way. Andrea Martin was writing her novel, and it literally completely deleted from her laptop. Not like, oh, I lost it. It deleted because she's not good at computers. James brought it back, but that's yeah. her level. I just happened to have it on my laptop. Otherwise, Don't get me we started. would have had a book. But, but we, we <laughs> taught her how to do stream art. It is not hard yeah. at all. Okay, we got to bring in our go. first guest. I'm so excited. Broadway star, Tony nominee. And our good friend, Anika Larson. Hi. Hi, Anika. Hey, you're, guys. You're in your house. I love how pretentious you have a Bach book in back of you. <laughs> that Why was is that there? That was Freddie, my husband. Uh, okay. All right, Freddie, your husband is a travel player. Yes. Wait, wait. You're cutting out when you do no, Wait, one more time. Go. Bach is his favorite, so he likes to have it on our piano. No one actually plays this piano. Uh, nobody knows how to play the piano, but I believe in like homes having piano. I love the time, like when every home had a piano and a colleague of his offered it to him for free if he would just get it out of the house. So we were like, yeah, we'll take it. Somebody's gonna play it someday. One this, of our is children. For, uh, this is for Freddie. <laughs> Just playing with you over there. <laughs> Go C minor. C minor. So Anika Larson. Um, by the way, we gotta mention that call me Adam thing. Where is that? Because you have a fabulous CD, I know. Oh, right. Okay. You have a I'll fabulous work on CD. That while you're doing and that. if people go to call me, oh my god, there it is. Sing you to sleep. And Anika, Anika's very like, I don't want to she's a Broadway star, yet she doesn't want attention, and it's true. So she's like, people wanted her to make a CD, and she's like, I why would I make a CD? Who anyway, why did you finally make this CD? Um, because I realized uh, babysitting was always my gig, um, my, my after school job or my day job once I was an, an actor. Um, and I would always sing to my nieces and nephews and stuff. And I thought, ooh, what about an album of lullabies, but lullabies for all ages? Um, wouldn't that be so like, then there'd be like a purpose to it instead of just like everybody listen to Anika sing covers of songs she didn't write. So um, at least it felt like there was a reason for it to exist. Um, and um, yeah, so we did it. So um, uh, it's the fun thing about it I'm very proud of was is that it's every song gets consecutively slower as time goes by, which is a trick from my babysitting, which is helpful in terms of yes. In terms, so play it in order. And but then you have sort of the, you know, the surprise at the end. The last one is. <laughs> to wake them the hell up. Wow. Um, so listen, if you go yeah. to the web, if you go to the Facebook of Call Me Adam, or on Twitter, if you go to at Call Me Adam NYC, after you donate to the Actors Fund, you're going to be entered into a drawing to win a copy of Anika CD. And there are going to be five winners, and it's such a great CD. So it's uh, Twitter is at Call Me Adam NYC, or look on Facebook, Call Me Adam. Don't forget, be donating to the Actors Fund. Yes. Or uh, you can go to my Facebook fan page, Anika, A-N-I-K-A, Larson, L-A-R-S-E-N. It was written wrong in the little artwork. Um, no, but it, it was It's okay. Jonathan Larson, he spells it that way. It's valid. Um, but, um, but if you go to my fan page, the link is also there. Great. So, Girlfriend McGuire, I want you to do this first song um, with, your, with your husband on trumpet. Am I correct? Yes. He played with me. It's the first song on this album. And he played uh, with me back back when we did it. There's Freddie. Nice. How's everyone Freddy doing? Ready? We're fine. We're socially distancing. All right. Sure. This is from the album, but it's live. I'm going to take myself out of the stream. 
There we go. Can you make me the trumpet? Yeah. All right. Let's hit it. I love. Oh, well, hold on! You just got clapping from Doctor Lapu. <laughs> That's so great. Thank you so much. Fantastic. I clean up this a lot now, so you know. <laughs> I just want everyone to know that. By the way, speaking of Doctor Lapu, do you have any questions you'd like to ask for the nice man? Us? Yes. You know, I was thinking about that. I think the. I think that we all have the small questions, or like the details about. Um, uh, what we can actually do um, that we can control. And it feels like the, the question everybody really wants answered that's sort of at the root of all of our anxiety mm -hmm. is one that I don't know that you can answer, which is sort of, we all want to be able to plan and when, and when do we get to come out of our house? When is this over? When does Broadway start again? That's, and I'm not sure that that's a question you can answer. I know. Nobody likes uncertainty, right? I mean, that's the, the stock market hates it. I personally hate it. And nobody likes feeling out of control. But it, so the, the answer is you're right. Nobody really knows. But let's concentrate on the next 15 days, right. the next month, 
but certainly the next 15 days. I've been looking at all these graphs that are coming out of then, you know, these studies and modeling that are coming out of places from around the world. And there's no doubt that we have this opportunity right now, which is precious to flatten that curve. So um, I think everybody everywhere, the thought that, oh, I'm not in a hot spot, so I'm not gonna do it, that's nuts. Because let's just assume that it's everywhere and that we haven't had enough tests to know that. Right. And there's really no downside to overdoing it. And I know it sounds so simple, but the hand washing is important uh, or the alcohol-based uh, you know, stuff if you, don't, if you don't have the soap and water. Soap and water is fine. Um, coughing into the crook of your arm or, or into a tissue. And this social distance, distancing, man, it's, it's certainly the most vulnerable are the people who are older and with the underlying conditions, but everybody's got to do it. The millennials have to do it. I know the millennials are taking it on the chin now. Be nice to a millennial now because everybody is really uh, you know, looking at them and saying, look, stop it. You have to be responsible. Don't be selfish. Please don't be selfish. Dr. Lapook, please come back. And just so you know, yay, Anika and Freddie. Oh my goodness, that was stunning. Love, love, love the song. Absolutely amazing. But one of the most vital questions is, Anika, who's watching the kids? Netflix. <laughs> they are down because we're hoping it'll last. They make Just, wreck everything. Side note, at the end of our show, we always, quote, unquote, release the dogs, and they all come running. Our little bagel has a limp today because he was running too much. So instead of releasing our dogs, we're going to release your angels. Our puppies. Our puppies. Sure. Yes. Your two dogs. Okay, uh, so. So I have some donations, and then you're going to take Yeah, so while we're doing these donations, Anika, can you get something ready on a certain phone? I sure can. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to Donations, actorsfund.org. Right. Well, and let's just remind everyone that Actors Fund helps people not just in New York, not just in LA, but all over the country. And not just and actors. not just actors. It's Everybody. Everyone, in the that's field. right. So here we go. Vaden from Nashville, Tennessee, $100. Wow. Michael, this is just during the show. Michael from Pennsylvania, $100. Mm -hmm. Barbara from Maryland, $51. Sarah from Texas, $51. Um, it's emotional having Anika on here and doing this. Because yeah. um, <laughs> Anika is such a good friend and, and so is Freddie and it's, um, it's especially emotional doing it with you. Um, Sarah from Texas, 51. Robin from the Bronx, 103. John from Los Angeles, 103. Sarah from Maryland, 51. Amber from Connecticut, 25. Tori from Florida, 25. Patricia from Pennsylvania, 25. Fran from Michigan, 51. And Randy from New Jersey, $5. Yay. Love. Yeah. Oh, no. Wait a minute. Randy from New Jersey, 51. 51. 51. I can't read, but I'm trying to do it without the glass. 46 hours off. Go, Seth. Ah, uh, love James so much. What a Aww. great guy. Sweet man. Okay, so wait, wait, can I just pause for a second? I'm going to interrupt you, and just I, I don't know if enough people are doing this, but just thank you guys for doing this. Um, you always, always pick up the mantle and run with it when when there's when there's a need. Um, and I know yesterday we had a moment we were rehearsing for this, and it was suddenly like the the sun came through the clouds, mm -hmm. and we got to do the thing we love to do and be us fully realized. And I know we've talked a lot about that about the need for the arts now and how artists need to perform. Um, so I just want to thank you for giving mm -hmm. us the chance to be on today. The joy it's bringing us. Freddie read this article about Italian musicians playing out their windows, and that made me cry. So we said we're gonna do that. We're we gotta. Do it we have a porch. We're gonna go on our porch. It's gonna be Love seventy it. degrees tomorrow. We're gonna tell. We're telling our neighbors right now. You heard it here first. <laughs> we're gonna invite our neighbors to come stay in our driveway, six feet apart from each other, and we're gonna. It's gonna be a weekly thing that we do. Super informal. Bring food and beverages and don't share. Mm -hmm. And um, we're just gonna play and, and be and do what we do. And uh, you know, we're also trying to find the way find the ways that we can give back and help and do. And so thank you guys for like doing it on this. That'll be such the micro scale. Thank you for doing it on such a large scale. I love that though. We should do like a hashtag porch concerts and see who else is gonna do that. Yeah. Let's start yeah. that hashtag. I'm gonna post this right now. So Anika, we're wondering, you know, life changes right now. And we're wondering how people are adjusting. And I know that you have a birthday in your family. You want to talk about what was planned? Yeah. So today, exactly, is my mom's 75th birthday. Wow, me that's great. Um, and she's had kind of a rough go of it for the last, she lost her husband last year. And she had uh, surgery for breast cancer and radiation treatments this winter. And so her five daughters, this, you know, you pull down the, pull down the picture. Mm -hmm. So I have nine brothers and sisters and five girls, five boys. And so the five, there's, this is her circa like 
80 something. So, um, <laughs> all the five daughters were going to get in the car and go for a road trip up to visit my mom in Rhode Island. And oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, hold on. I cut you out. Here, go back one time. They were going to do what? Mom. Um, and um, we, didn't, we just didn't want to bring her five different sets of germs from five places. It just didn't seem smart considering her age and considering she just had some serious medical stuff going on. So um, hopefully this makes up for it, Mom. Happy birthday. <laughs> Maybe I'll call her right now. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Hey, Mom, answer your phone. <laughs> yeah. Mrs. Larson? We're calling. We're calling. I just saw you guys all together. <laughs> Hold on. We're waiting. Connecting. There's hi. mom. Hi. Hi. Oh, hi. Happy birthday, mom. Happy birthday. Can we? Can mom we also the cruise? Hi. Mom, hi. Mom, he's usually our babysitter. Hi. Hi. Oh, yeah. We need you. She wasn't. Can we all? Her. Everybody watching, can we sing like a virtual happy birthday? What's your mom's first name? Yes. Okay. So, mom, we're gonna all sing. Everybody who's watching in their own quiet homes. Everybody watching is gonna sing happy birthday to you right now, okay? Trey's gonna play. Yeah. All right, ready? Here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear mom. Happy birthday to you. I love you. She's crying. Oh, there's other people crying. All right. Oh, it's the delay. I love you, Mom. Thank you, Thank you Seth. <laughs> I was so right. happy. I love you. Bye. Okay, we're bringing up, bye. happy birthday. We're bringing up another special guest star. He didn't write happy birthday, but boy, he's written some amazing stuff. One of them being a certain Pulitzer Prize winning, Tony Award winning, uh, next to normal. The man's name is Tom Kitt. Tom Kitt, hi. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hey, Tom. <laughs> hi. Tom Kitt, uh, we're so excited you're here. You have the nerve to have two shows that are happening. You're so prolific, I can't take it. What sign are you, by the way? Pisces. Hey, so am I, when's your birthday? February 28th. Wait a, Wait minute. a minute, you have the same birthday. Are you Are you February 28th? Yes. <laughs> I didn't know that. Do you know who else is? Brent Barrett, Kelly Bishop, Zero Mostel, Bernadette Peters, Tommy Toon, Tom Kent, I can't believe we have the same birthday. And Bill, and, and Bill Finn. And Bill Finn, and by the way, as Will Swenson says about, anyway, between the two of us, Tom, we have one Tony Award. I have none. <laughs> anyway, um, so you're doing Flying Over Sunset, which we should also bring on. We should have Carmen Cusack and everybody come on. But yes. your other show you're doing is called Almost Famous. So talk about your involvement with Almost Famous from the movie to the musical. Well, um, it, it's uh, such a, a great gift to have Almost Famous in my life. First, uh, because of Cameron Crowe. Um, he's somebody whose writing I have revered and it's meant so much to me in my life. And uh, he's just one of those people that you think, God, if I could ever meet that person, work with that person, and suddenly when this was happening, I, I jumped at the chance to, to get to write it with him. And uh, we have an incredible team, incredible company, and Nika Larson right at the center of that. Uh, it's just been a joy every step of the way. And um, we actually just got to go into uh, the studio and all be together and, and, and do some tracks together. So um, really excited about that show and, and grateful that I get to work on it. You're writing music and you're co-writing lyrics with Cameron Crowe, right? Correct. So it went from, I would love to meet him one day to you're literally collaborating <laughs> side by side. Yeah, and, and also, um, you know, when you're, when you're uh, friends with Cameron, every so often you get a text, hey, I just found this, uh, this, you know, nobody's ever heard this snippet from blah, 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 rock star that I wanted to share with you. And, and, and so I'm literally freaking out um, at just the, the memorabilia and the history that he has at his fingertips. And he really is a, an encyclopedia. I've learned so much from him and continue to, not just about, um, humanity and and uh, I just I just I always say that he writes the kind of of um, characters and dialogue that we wish everyday life we were expressing ourselves in. Mm -hmm. So I just think he's a true poet. I know you're not officially allowed to say, it, but as far as I know, the show is definitely coming to Broadway. It got amazing reviews when it was out of town. I don't want to you know tip any hands, but I'm sure it's going to come to Broadway. Describe Anika's role, if you will, and then um, like who does she play? She plays almost or famous, which. <laughs> Um, she's both. She's almost and she's famous. Yeah. Uh, Anika steps into the iconic role uh, that Frances McDormand played in, in the film. Um, uh, and uh, she's just, uh, 
she's incredible. I mean, we, we all know that Frances McDormand is just an unbelievable talent and uh, Anika has come into it and made it her own in this beautiful, special way. Uh, and uh, I can also let Anika speak about, um, you know, the, the, what it's meant to her to play this role and to play someone who's um, so close to um, our, our wonderful author's heart. Well, you're playing a mom, Anika, now you actually are a mom. Yeah, no, I mean, um, five years ago before kids, I, I just, there just wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to do it as well. I just, I, I wouldn't, it's, it's, um, it's it's so easy to understand the mom of two boys and so to be the mother of this son um and also it's you know this the show is autobiographical so i'm playing cameron's mom so it's in in all of the writing and the sort of um developing her and 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 giving her more to say and more to sing um all he's doing is thinking what would what would my mom say and then Tom helps put it to music. Um, she's so incredibly three-dimensional and she's just a, a phenomenon. She's just a phenomenal woman um, and um, an extraordinary mother. Um, uh, flawed, like all interesting characters are, but um, a really, really cool um, uh, woman to be able to play. And um, yeah, it's incredibly mean, meaningful. There's like, there's been all these crazy, I call it the sort of thousand layers of serendipitous motherhood about all of this. I mean, the fact that the show takes place in 1973, I was born in 1973. My mom, who you just met, was pregnant with me in the spring of 73 when the show took place. And actually one of her maternity shirts that she wore when she was pregnant with me, I wear in the show. Oh my so gosh. much is, is vintage, yeah. David Zinn, our costumer, let me. I showed it to him and I was like, don't feel any pressure. And then there was a scene that where it worked. So, yeah. so yeah, so there's like all of this sort of crazy kismet and, and um, just from the beginning, I've been so grateful that I, I was the, the, from the first reading, they asked me to do this and, and I just, I, I connected to her and, and um, they, they, Cameron and Tom have entrusted me. It really feels like honestly, and I'm not being coy when I say this, like all I have to do is say or sing the words and get out of the way. It's it's all the work is done for me. Um, it's so easy, it's so beautiful. I can't wait for everybody to see it. Well, guess what? People are gonna see something. Tom has graciously allowed Anika to sing a song from the show, which is pretty rare, but don't forget, we're doing this all for the Actors Fund. You see on the bottom, it's scrolling, donated actorsfund.org. We're getting like wonderful donations. I mean, um, I was gonna have a little, someone just wrote something very sweet. Look at this, I just donated $20. Sorry, I couldn't do more, but income is a bit of a question. Boy, is it a question. It's all I could spare from Birmingham in the UK. I mean, how, it's really incredible. So Anika, Tom, why don't you guys set up the song? I'm gonna take myself off screen. I'm gonna see what this sounds like. Tom, this is the first time, if you weren't in San Diego at the Old Globe, you didn't hear, n nobody's heard music from the show. That's exactly right. Right? right? Exactly right. I feel very, I feel the weight of that. I can handle it, but I'm a little nervous. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, this is actually one of the first songs that we wrote. Um, and uh, mm -hmm. I know for me, uh, it really expresses what's uh, at the center of, of a parent's heart. This this idea that um, at a certain point you have to let your child go and uh, go on a journey and uh, a journey of discovery and, and and sort of let them live their life, but. Um, at the same time, as a parent, you know what awaits them, and and it scares you to death. So it's uh, it's that juxtaposition of wanting to be a good parent who protects, but also a good parent who uh, lets lets your child live their life. Yeah. So my son has just come to me and asked to go out on this rock concert tour, and I don't feel good about it, but I'm scared <laughs> to leave. So I let him go, and then feel immediately worried. Tom Kidd on the keys, by the way. He's the one thing I have now The others went away And I can't afford to lose him too He has dreams he must chase now And they might lead him astray So what is it that I'm supposed to do? I pull tighter, but he gets loose I confront him, but he makes an excuse. I fear I may be losing my touch. It's a burden you see to have such wisdom in me. Cause he knows too little and I know too much. Yeah, he knows too little and I know too much. He 
needs his independence. He needs to be free. That's fine as long as he is still dependent on me. The world has lots to offer, lots of misery and pain. And Hemingway would still be here if he learned to abstain. You go to school for learning, but this they will not teach. They like it when you're drowning miles away from any beach. So why go through the anguish, the suffering and strife? Be happy with a less unhappy life. Oh, oh. So be careful, be prudent and wise. Don't become someone I don't recognize. Keep away from empty vessels and such. Be the man, the boy that I raised, with a mother who's crazed. That you know too little, and I know too much. Yeah, he knows too little. And I know too much. So great. Wow. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Anika. Wow, Tom, that's, that's a beautiful phrase. You know, so I didn't know too much. Where did that phrase come from? That was something Cameron came up with. That was in, uh, you know, the very first draft that he shared. And um, it's just, it leapt out as a, as a song, as, as you recognize. It's just, a, it's a beautiful statement about uh, being a parent. Sums up, sums up being a parent. Yeah, exactly right. Wow, that is beautiful. All right, Tom, thank you so much. Thank you for letting us witness that. Yes, thank you. Um, okay. I'm, we'll, we'll have Tom back. Yeah, I'm Tom, sure. you're going to, you're definitely going to come back. And I'm going to have like, I would love to have um, Sherry Scott and you guys do some sassy tracks from Everyday Rapture. So next to normal, well, you'll be back. You'll be back. You'll <laughs> be back. Bye, Tom. Bye. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Um, do we, for people who are watching, this is time for Q and A. Um, and but uh, Anika, so put up your questions. Anika, yeah, questions for this. Anika or Dr. Lapu. Right, and Anika wanted to show this to you because look what Kelly just wrote. Anne and I are watching and loving every minute. Just made our donation. Thank you, Seth and James, for always stepping up. Well, I'm not going to read about us, but um, I wanted to share because Kelly and Anne are friends of ours. So yeah, they run uh, they run this fabulous cruise company. As you know, we're all hurting the cruise company. So Kelly and Anne will be back as we stay in the business. And of course, we all know that. That's just everyone <laughs> say that. Oh, look at this. Thank you. Oh, well, of course, it's a gorgeous song. Watching my dad. Aniko, you made me cry again. Oh, bravo. Okay, so any questions for Dr. LaPook? And also, James. Um, well, while we're waiting for people, where is that, Sethi? Um, so, Dr. LaPook, I was telling you, I had a question. I, so, I was reading Politico or, or New York Times or whatever it was, and then one of those Google ads came up, and it was a person wearing a mask, and the mask, the, the ad said, protect yourself wherever you go from viruses and air particles. Truth, fiction, what's the deal? Which is the yeah. Okay. So what people have been saying is if it's just really um, from droplet and you're sick, then wearing that mask can protect others from getting infected. So if you sneeze or cough, it'll get caught. But it's not a perfect fit. The virus itself is 0.1 microns. It could go through uh -huh. that mask. It's not like an N95. It's not perfectly fitted. So again, I, you know, I, we've said this a few times, but for people... Um, who are thinking of getting their own N95s at home. I did see an email from a doctor in the intensive care unit at, up in the Northwest who was taking care of very sick people who said, we've run out of N95 masks. And then in parenthesis, basically, thanks a lot, hoarders. So I know it's a natural instinct. You want to, I might as well get 100 N95 masks. No, we need them where they're being used. Um, if you want, you know, I just got a transcript of the, I won't read the whole thing, of the White House briefing, which I think could give people some very much up-to-date stuff that's coming out of the White House task force. I'll make it kind of quick. Um, they're looking at anti-malarial drugs. You've heard about this, chloroquine, hydroxychloroquine. 
There's no, no, they don't know if it works. There's another drug the FDA is looking at called remdesivir. Again, investigational. They're not sure about that. Um, uh, Pence said, tens of, Vice President Pence said, tens of thousands of coronavirus tests are being performed daily. Every state and private lab is now required to report results to the CDC. That wasn't being done before, so that's good. We'll get an idea of the numbers. Expect to see an increase in the number of cases because now test results are, right. are rolling in. We weren't testing before. Honeywell and 3M have increased production on N95 masks, and uh, 3M is manufacturing 35 million masks per month. Uh, Penn said the administration was increasingly confident that the in the U.S. that they'll have the ventilators it needs. That remains to be seen. That's gonna, that right. could be a big issue. Uh, and then finally, uh, Dr. Burks, Deborah Burks said positive tests for coronavirus are in the 10 to 11 percent range. This is interesting. 50 percent of the cases are from three states. 50% of the cases come from 10 counties. And then uh, our Surgeon General Adams asked Americans to donate blood. I guess there's a shortage. Right. Hey, uh, one more, and then we're going to go to a question for Anika. But, Doctor, this is one I'm curious about. Is it sa safe to pump your own gas? Yeah, I mean, you have to think about what we're now learning about the virus. It can uh, be for several days on hard surfaces. So I think it's on cardboard. It's like a day, but on plastic or on metal, it can be two to three days, perhaps even more. So get that wipe, whatever it is that you're using, Clorox or whatever. Um, I think it's it's better to be safe than sorry. Um, and yeah, you should assume that every surface that somebody was there before you and put their hand down and now we don't know how long it lasts. So I basically, I basically put the Clorox wipe on my hand and I grab something. I mean, is that okay? Instead of wiping it down, I just keep it over my hand. Yeah, again, you have to think about if you use that same Clorox wipe, you know, get no, it. I, I just keep it on that one. Right. And then remember that you got Clorox on your hand. So then right. don't. Right. right. Um, Anika, here's a here's a question for you. Oh, no, no that's not it. Where is it? <laughs> right Anika, here we go. Hey, Anika, if you could start with any other performer in an original musical, who would it be? People always ask these questions that are so hard. I um, know, I know. I threw it at you anyway. You can name a couple. You know, I know, I know what the first, I'll, you always should go with the first thing that came to your mind. Um, and um, Jessie Mueller came to my mind. I mean, I know I did be beautiful with her, but it was such a joy that I would do anything ever, anywhere with her again. Well, I would like to say something. Dr. LaPook, take a break for just a moment. Hi. Uh, so, uh, so I just want to say, it's really important to keep in touch with close friends. Very, very important. And because of that, we have Jesse ah! Mueller. I didn't know. I swear to God. That is amazing. That you were so beautiful. Win. <laughs> Anika and I were just talking on the phone yesterday. Seth and James, you guys didn't know that, but she called me while she was on a walk with the kids. So she was getting the fresh air for me. <laughs> okay, I love that. So we really think it's so important to just FaceTime friends and talk to friends. The social distancing is really isolating. And this yeah. is our new thing. We're gonna to try to surprise our guests with like various friends Aww. who to say, hey. So Jesse and Anika. Wait, I'm poking you, I'm poking you. Oh, <laughs> it's not the Brady Bunch. Hey, listen, Jesse, we got a vital question from Maya. She said on the beautiful vlog, you claimed you were gonna find out Anika's favorite sandwich and you never did. So what's up with that? Anika, what's your favorite sandwich? I don't remember this. <laughs> um, you have again. You have to go with the, the first thing that comes in your mind. I haven't had one in years, but my dad used to make them for us all the time: peanut butter and bacon. Oh, yeah, I am ostensibly a vegetarian. I'm a terrible vegetarian. Because yeah, <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> yeah. you know, Remember, you used to like. You also used to like those. That one place was doing like the bon mi sandwiches with the the grilled peach or something. While we were yeah. doing beautiful. Remember that? Yes, like up on fifty something. Yes, I mean, six I and seven. Too. So if you don't know, Jesse was Carol King and Anika Larson was her sidekick. What was that song you sang at the very end where you say your name? Um, you spell out your name. W E I L, Cynthia Weil. Yeah, Cynthia Weil. I love that. Um, yeah. So listen, Jesse Mueller is going to come back and do her own full sassy show with some sassy singing, but I wanted you two to connect. Jesse, what are you doing to sort of stay home and occupy be healthy? Yeah, what be are you healthy? doing to be healthy? Uh, I'm making lots of lists, I'm drinking lots of liquids. Uh, connecting with friends. I'm about to bust out this coloring book. Um, <laughs> there's paperwork. There's, like I said, lots of lists. I think I'm going to shred some paper and I'm washing my hands a lot. And I'm very glad I, um, uh, Dr. LaPook did the thing about the fingertips. I didn't know about the fingertips, but that makes sense. Oh, yeah. Here, let's, let's right? Bye -bye. So thumbs up. 
Dr. LaPook, look at that. Jesse, Jesse, a Tony Award winner is taking your advice. Hey, listen, I didn't know until I took this hospital course, which I always hated doing every year. And I, I said, oh my gosh, I've been doing it wrong. That was like 10 years ago. Um, that's brilliant. That makes so much sense. It's so it's such a good idea. And I have one other suggestion. Everybody who's watching right now, think of three people in your life who might be alone and reach out to them today. Three people. I love that. Okay, so Dr. Pook, we're gonna bring you back. I have a vital question. What is this? Is this? So, <laughs> or is this really? Is this real? Is this really happening? Is this there? So, if you don't know, this is every single day, two p.m., eight p.m., live, <laughs> Eastern. We're raising money for the Actors Fund. You go to actorsfund.org. We always have stars, and we always have a chief medical correspondent. That's there's just so many, us. There's so many different meanings. And what is this? What is this? <laughs> like, why did the one girl curl her hair and that other kid showed up looking unshowered? What is this? Why is that the line reading? <laughs> Jesse Mueller, you were in the middle of doing a Broadway show and everything stopped. Are you just like a full robot with your arm like that? There's the show. Oh my God. Wow, well, this is the it? level of sweatshirt. Yes, I'm really here to keep the minutes of this um, live stream. So I've been. Well played. I've been notating it. She's I'm here typing. That's the show, by the way, the minutes. All right. This part is fascinating. We'll see you soon, Jesse. Thank you, Jesse. <laughs> Anika Larson, today, um, you well, Not have... only is her birth is her mom's birthday, but it's the anniversary of a certain show that you starred in on Broadway. Yes. And it's the anniversary of the off-Broadway opening of Avenue Q. And who was there but John Tartaglia. Oh, hi. Hi, Danny. Hi. Oh, Anika. Oh, Rod. Hi, Rod. Hi, Anika. Oh, it's been so long. It's so good to see you. It's so good to see you, too. How, I can't figure out how to work this thing. It's crazy. Anyway, hi. Oh, Seth and James, look at you, too. It's like a flashback to Regis and Kelly before, when they liked each other. Oh. Oh. Sure. I shouldn't say anything. So, Rod, what was it like yeah. when you won the Tony Award for Avenue Q? Oh, it was it was mind blowing. We didn't expect it. We thought it was going to be wicked for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people ask if we knew. We did not know. We had no idea. Um, and we were just we were just glad. You know, Stephanie DeBruzzo always says she was glad that we were even invited to the party. I agree with that. We were just happy to be at the party. We were like the nerds at the at the table eating the food. We were just happy to be there. You know. How old were you when you got nominated for that Tony Award? Um, are you talking to him? I'm talking to actually JT. <laughs> oh, hi everyone. I was I was 25. How incredible is that to get a Tony nomination at that yeah. age, man? Yeah, I didn't expect it. Well, and and it was my first Broadway show, and I had a, I had puppets on my hands, so it was like the most like surreal, like not expected thing in the entire world. I still don't believe it, actually. <laughs> okay, so Johnny, I have to actually have you back because I you have to recreate your Lion King audition with full hands because I'm so obsessed with that. So I'm gonna have you back. Okay. And by the way, where are you right now? Where am I talking to you? I'm in California. I'm in Los Angeles. And you're and holding in your You're still hosting Sirius XM every Sunday, Sunday Fun Day. I am every Sunday to 8 p.m. Eastern time on Channel 72. Uh, I always give a shout out to your show too. Do you know that? I always give a shout out to Seth Speaks. Always. We listen to you. And what are you doing during this time of social distancing? Um, well, you know, so I'm out here because I, I work part time for the Jim Henson Company. So I've been doing luckily a lot of writing, a lot of script meetings and things like that, like which we can do virtually. Thank goodness for FaceTime and stuff like that. Um, but I've been doing just a lot of, yeah, just a lot of like creative stuff. I actually finding like crafting time. Like I'm, I'm getting to that point. Like, what is it? Day five or six. Oh, that was, actually one of our, so, um, a, a, a friend of mine actually has, uh, COVID-19. And so I kind of like self quarantined to be safe for a few weeks just to make sure luckily he's okay now. But, um, so yeah, I've just been doing a lot of like crafting and puppet making and writing and, and, and yeah, it's amazing what you, it's amazing what you can get done when you have those hours. Yeah. And by the way, Rod's head is really big. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm large. Next... Wide angle, baby. Wide angle. <laughs> I'm out. All Thank right. you, Rod. Thank you, John. Thank you, Johnny. Happy <laughs> Avenue Q anniversary. I love you, Anika. Happy anniversary. <laughs> okay, so Anika, we're gonna do. But now you're gonna make me follow a real puppeteer. You know, I just you act really? like a puppeteer. I'm just gonna announce it. A real puppet. That's a nice puppet. Let's just everybody lower your expectations right now. Let me just announce the stress Anika had to go through at one point. She was closing uh, Avenue Q on Broadway. She was in the closing company, so she was going through the emotion of knowing the show was closing. That kind of sadness. 
On top of that, she knew the whole original cast was in the audience watching the final performance and ostensibly judging her. I mean, you can't help it. What being watched by the original cast. Plus, she knew the show was going to reopen in a month off Broadway, and they were deciding what cast to go with it. So she was devastated from the show closing, being judged by the original cast, and basically auditioning. So if you handle that stress, dear, you can handle this stress. You remember everything. His mind, unreal. You went to Yale. Okay, so we're going to do a song. You're going to play the character of Lucy the Slut with your own kind of makeshift puppet, which I'm obsessed with. Where'd you get this puppet? Um, online. It, it's, it's like driving a Pinto after you've been driving a Lexus, but <laughs> it's all good. So you'll be Lucy the Slut. It's my piano accompaniment and sexy trumpet playing from your husband, Freddie. Yeah. Perfect. The sax solo. He's going to make it a trumpet solo. Oh, I'll get my sax. All right. Happy anniversary, Avenue Q. Yes, happy anniversary. Here, wait. Let me make sure she's ready. Yes. Here she goes. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I don't want to cover you. No, you cover me. I'm, no, I'm no. Right back here. I'll, I'll All right. Play. Hold on, Anika. This is uh, uh, you see a little comment? Is that true? It's my sister. Oh, <laughs> it's your sister. Is that? Oh my God, it's Britta. I didn't realize that. Oh, Hi, Britta. <laughs> yes. So she does know the true story. Yes. My dresser at Beautiful said, "Would you like to go on a blind date with the trumpet player named Freddie?" And the day we recorded the Beautiful album, I was anxious all day. You can hear it in my voice, maybe in this on the cast album. Um, mm -hmm. I went straight from the recording studio to BB King's, and I watched him play for an hour and a half. And I thought, he's hot. Boy, can he play the trumpet. Please let us have something to talk about. And we did. <laughs> Your two sons. I love it. All right, go enjoy. <laughs> Hit it. I can make you feel special when it sucks to be you. Let me make you feel special for an hour or two. Your life's a routine that repeats each day. No one cares we all or what you say. And sometimes you feel like you're nobody. But you can feel like somebody with me. The sound was great. Okay, we're we're going to close with donations. We're close with donations while Freddie gets uh, uh, two special. Yeah, exactly. Your puppies. <clears throat> Christine from California, $51. Adam from New Jersey, $75. Stephen from New Jersey, $51. Ty from Los Angeles, $103. Lane from California, $51. Stacy from New Jersey, $50. Stuart from New York, $206. William from Washington, D.C., $51. Lauren from Florida, $25. Carrie from North Carolina, 51. Brittany from New York, 51. And Elizabeth from New York, $103. Thank you all. Oh my God, the doggies are out, as we say. <laughs> this Yay. Is and this is Asha. Hi. And what we are doing to make the most of our time during this time is we are toilet training Asha, who yesterday had his first day with no accidents. Yay! Yay. To harmonize, 
He, if we can, he has his 20 second um, song that he sings when he washes his hands. Do you I want to hear it? I know, I want to have a <laughs> Why don't you sing It's a Hard Knock Life for everybody, okay? Okay. It's a hard knock life for us. It's a hard knock life for us. Pinch. Down the octave. Down the octave. Asha, Asha, you know what the name of this dog is? The name of my dog is Ash. Oh, really? Ash. Yay! Yeah, Key switches octaves all the time. It's crazy. Wait, I love it. But the pitch was amazing. Celebrated. We, the family is on. You guys still got going on. All right, so listen, tonight yeah. we're going to be back with Kayla Settle um, from The Greatest Showman, who's going to be singing so many songs. Yeah, and she's going to be wearing her full glam. She's going to wear what she wore to the Oscars, Christian Siriano. So Seth and I are going to be wearing her jackets. Julie's about to give me a haircut. We're going to be all dolled up, as it were, to match Kayala yes. as best as we can. And uh, we'll be back at 8 o'clock. That's 8 a.m. tonight. Dr. the Poop will be here tonight. Yeah, we'll see you tonight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And don't forget, go to um, go to the Twitter. I'm um, at CallMeAdamNYC. Donate to the Actors Fund, and you'll be entered to win Anika's fabulous CD. Oh, hold on. And I forgot. Um, Adam Feldman is doing um, shout-outs every day at timeout.com slash New York slash theater. That's E-R. And you can find theater listings that are being done virtually. So you yeah. can watch them at home and not feel alone. And um, and he's been great in putting our listing up there. Yeah, slash theater. And um, oh, and, and what's your Twitter handle and all that? Because we keep oh, forgetting to say that. Mine is just at Seth Rudetsky. And I'm James Wesley NYC. All right. We'll see you at eight. Bye, everybody. Yes. Bye. 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 Bye.